propylene glycol uh, and why you do not want it on your skin. It's an emollient and emulsifier. You can find it in different cosmetics, medications, unfortunately even medications, and even food. In 2018, the American Contact Dermatitis Society named it an allergen of the year. We know that propylene glycol can cause contact, systemic, and cutaneous reactions. Plenty have been documented for propylene glycol, and it's becoming a more and more increasingly common ingredient. So try to avoid it, because the more you are exposed to it, and in certain things, you just can't not to be exposed to it. Certain medications based on corticosteroids, for example, when they are prescribed to you, you will have to use them, and they will have this ingredient. In them. So it's not like you can pick and choose. Often you just want to reserve using this type of ingredients for situations when you just can't avoid them. And so in cosmetics, when you have options, try not to. Because the more you are exposed to uh, ingredients that potentially can cause allergies, the higher the chances that you eventually will become sensitized and allergic kind of to that ingredient. So at the present time, Dermatologists estimate that propylene glycol allergy ranges from 0.8 to 3.5%. One of the products that we reviewed with propylene glycol is Bonyol. What exactly makes propylene glycol so not friendly to your skin? I read a literature review on this topic, and there are four mechanisms that they have identified how propylene glycol interacts with the skin and what exactly it does to it. So, first of all, it can be just an irritant that causes contact dermatitis. That's the most common type. This is non-allergic skin reaction, and it happens when the irritant damages your skin outer protective layer and your skin reacts with a mild inflammation. And uh, some people develop it uh, over the time, others can develop it after a single exposure. Again, <laughs> the less you use certain ingredients, the better you're protecting yourself from this particular situation. Second group of uh, effects that uh, propylene glycol can cause is contact dermatitis. It's an itchy rash caused directly uh, by contact with an allergen, so it's more of an allergic reaction. So this rash is obviously not contagious, but can be very uncomfortable, especially if you use propylene glycol-based products on your perineal region, which we are all about here. <laughs> perineal region, perianal region. Many substances can cause this type of reaction. Even things like non-cosmetics, like, you know, jewelry or pets, <laughs> plants. But again, propylene glycol is neither, <laughs> you can easily avoid it, <laughs> and you don't want to put propylene glycol on your genitals. And the rash can also show up within a few days after the exposure. That's what makes it tricky to diagnose with just a simple patch test. So if you really want to be sure you want to do a patch test with that propylene glycol based product for a few days, repeatedly, <laughs> and then decide whether to put it on your genitals or not. The third group of uh, cases as a contact urticaria. It's a transient kind of flare response to the exposure. It's not really an allergy. It is a less weird different mechanism of how it is triggered, but basically one of the mechanisms is thought to be that it's direct capillary damage on the site of the contact and your body releases those hormone-like substances that eventually translate into inflammation. And the fourth group is subjective or sensory irritation. So when it just feels odd right away, when you kind of like, oh my God, this is itching or stinging, whatever, and you might not have any visible cutaneous response. So your skin could be absolutely fine, but your body somehow just Let's you know, wow, that's poison for us. Don't touch it. So this is also the same thing with fragrances. People often have these odd responses to strong fragrances. They're like, wow, can't stand it, start sneezing. Do not mistake in this to allergens that are like, you know, plant allergies or dandruff from pets. That's a different story. Okay, so what would be interesting if you guys look through your products and see if you have propylene glycol in any of your personal care products. Let me know in the comments.